February 19th, um, 2016. This is your prophecy update. I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet, okay? But I want to start by, by way of a disclaimer of sorts. Look, I realize I'm not the brightest crane in the box, okay? Um, I've had more than my fair share of drug overdoses and, and near-death experiences in my past life. So, you know, quite frankly, I'm surprised I'm even here, let alone able to talk or to read or to walk. You know, I, hey, thank God, I'm living on borrowed time. And I'm going to try to make the best of it. <laughs> try being the key word. I know I fail. And I, I know I say things that, that, let's just say, raise some eyebrows. Because I finally got my first um, uh, fan mail. Um, and I appreciate it. I welcome it. Um, you know, you're, you're entitled to your opinions and your colorful language. Um, thank you. And, and you know what? You're all entitled to your opinions and, and your, you know, your comments are, are valid. So please feel free to share in the comment section below. Maybe you might start a conversation. Maybe, you know, because I'm not the brightest crayon in the box. I already told you that. And if I'm raising some eyebrows, maybe you want to bring it up for a discussion. See what other people say as well. But that's neither here nor there. Um, I just want to say, hey, someone's watching. Yay. <laughs> um, yeah, I realize sometimes I'm long-winded. And doing the analytics, you know, the... the the viewing just drops off after 10 minutes. You know, no one watches these things all the way through. Maybe my mom does, because one person did. But look, Prophecy Update is for you. It's for me. It's important. It's for our our encouragement and our edification, our, our education, to, to let us know exactly, hey, you know, what time is it? And, and quite frankly, we're all living on borrowed time. Because if you look at America and you look at the news... We're all living on borrowed time. But I raised a few eyebrows. I think it was the last time um, that we did this. I said a few things that raised some eyebrows. I just want to start today by, by addressing that real quickly. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 42, in regards to the rapture versus the second coming, okay? Jesus' own words in Matthew 24, 42, he says, Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming plain and simple. In 40, at verse 44, um, he says, Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. At an hour that you do not expect, if you look at this, uh, you know, with, with common sense and, and reasoning, you would think that, okay, coming at an hour that you do not expect, either things are going to be so good, so great, that you're not, a, you're not even going to be looking. You're not even going to be ready. You're not even going to care, because things are just so good. He's going to come at an hour that you do not expect. It's either going to be so good, or on the other hand, it's going to be so very, very bad that, you know, you gave up hope. You lost the faith. You, you know, you know, you're not going to expect it because you, you quit. I'm done. Taking my toys and going home. Look, we're talking about the rapture here. It's going to come at an hour that, you know, you're not going to, you will not know what hour the Lord is coming, and it says uh, He's going to come at an hour that you do not expect. In Matthew chapter 24, also in Matthew, I mean, excuse me, Mark chapter 13, verses 32 and 33. I'll read it. It says, "But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father." Take heed, take heed. It says, "Watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is." Clearly, we're talking about the rapture, which can happen today, could have happened yesterday, it could still happen tomorrow. It's going to come at an hour that you do not expect. And I'm looking at it's either going to be so good or so bad, I'm leaning towards the so bad part, okay? That's the rapture. Now, you look at the second coming, which I've said are two unique and separate events, and it's taught in Scripture because in Daniel, chapter 12, verses 11 and 12, now listen to me, okay? Pay attention. It's Daniel is giving prophecy. He says, and from that time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Talking about the Antichrist coming in, the, there's, the third temple is built. The Antichrist comes in and sets up the abomination of desolation, which could be like a, 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 a robot, a statue, something. And we re, you know, read the book of Daniel. It's, you want to read it. Chapter 12, verse 12. Blessed is he who waits 
to the 1,335 days, talking about the second coming, Jesus coming back in person and sets foot on the earth. And when he does, he's going to split the Mount of Olives in two. We know that from the scriptures, but, you know, in, in the epistles, you know, the Christians are looking for that, that blessed hope, the, the rapture. It's taught plainly in the Bible. It's also taught plainly the second coming. And, you know, you look at the uh, the campaign of, of Armageddon. Jesus comes back and, and his robe is, you know, drenched in blood. Two separate and unique events. I know some people do not hold that point of view, but that, again, is just a point of view, and you're welcome to it. But when you read the Bible, it, it plainly shows two different, separate, unique events. Okay? And also, I guess I said last time, we, we, we looked at an article on uh, Israel National News. It was published on February 11, 2016. It was called, Scientists to Unveil Proof of Einstein's Theory of Relativity relativity and I supplied the link and I said something to the effect that you know clearly this is you know talking about time travel and I think I even used the the word picture or the reference to the movie Dune you know folding space and I touched a nerve there and that's cool that's cool but you know what I don't make these things up but just to sound fantastic and, and whatever um, on the 15th, uh, on DailyBeast.com, there was a bunch of other scientists who wrote an article and said, hold up, did we just talk, did we just crack time travel? I referred to this, uh, this um, Einstein's theory of relativity as, you know, means space travel, time travel, and people say, oh, you're losing your mind. There's an article, and I'm going to supply the, the link. I want you to read it for yourself. DailyBeast.com, look it up, it says, hold up. Did we just crack time travel? Interesting uh, article. And it kind of backs up what I already said. And I said that of my own accord. It's, it, you know, I know it sounds fantastic, but it's, it's plausible, okay? A lot of people just want to deny and, and, and fight things. And that's cool that you are entitled to your opinions, as am I. But when I'm doing these prophecy updates, I'm not trying to only just give you my opinions. I want to give you fact. And that's why I'm supplying these links. I want to give you the truth. That's why I'm reading from the Bible. I want to give you hope. That's why I hope that... There it goes again. I want to give you hope. So I, that's only found in the relationship with, with Jesus Christ. Okay? Because we look at what's going on today. And what it means. Where it's taking us. What it's leading up to. It, Things are going to get so bad, especially here in America. We are in this window of time where where things are going to happen, and they already are. I won't talk about that today because I want to keep this short and sweet, all right? But today, I, I just want to look at two things quickly, and then I'll say goodbye. I don't want to hold you here too long. In the news today, you can see the growing um, sense of frustration and anger and anti-Semitism. People are hating on the Jews, okay? How does that relate to prophecy? Luke 18, verse 8. I love this verse because it, it says a lot. It says, and I quote, and as Jesus speaking again, it says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Question. Now, I could be wrong because this is just my opinion. But whenever we see a question posed like that in, in, in Scripture, the answer is always implied no. There's a question, the implied answer is no. So in this instance, in, in Luke 18, verse 8, here's Jesus asking the question, you know, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? The answer would be no. <laughs> It's just been my experience to find that so far from what I've been seeing in Scripture. Anytime there's a, an open-ended question, the answer is implied. That's all I want to say about that, because that's just my opinion. It's not dogma, it's not Christian, it's not... Uh, well, it is, I'm a Christian, but it's not Christian doctrine, okay? Anyways, so we're talking about anti-Semitism. You know, people hating on the Jews and, and wh how that fits in prophecy. Well, it does. And it's also in the news because on February 18th, 2016, on jpost.com, there is a, an article. And I'm going to supply the links. I want you to read these for yourselves, okay? 
It's entitled, Students in Brooklyn College Demand Zionists Off Campus. Okay, when you read this article, to me, and I'm sure to you as well, you will see, you will make the correlation, you will connect the dots, and, and you will put the picture together for yourself. And I'm not because I'm telling you it, but when you read this article, you are clearly and cl plainly and clearly, you're going to see liberalism at the heart of all this uh, um, anti-Semitism. You're going to see socialism. In this article, you will see that the mindset of kids in college today, the mindset of the world at large, or can I say in general, liberalism, socialism, progressive, if progressivism, if that's a word, progressives, you know, people, oh, but we're, we're evolving, we're beginning better and better. I beg to differ. At, 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 at the bottom of this, at the heart of it, at the core, what lies underneath all of this is just the hatred of Israel. The, the, the hatred of, of, especially in this uh, article, college kids, um, for the Jewish people, for, for Israel, for the Hebrew race. There's, there's hatred and there's lies. There's so many lies going on in, Who's the father of all lies? Who's at the root of all this anti-Semitism? I want you to think about that, okay? And I want to ask the question. Can you be a Christian and be liberal? Is liberalism even remotely comparative to Christianity? Is socialism in step with Christianity? Progressive mindset? Is that... And again, the answer is implied. Um, we'll get back to that. On February 16th, 2016, on jpost.com, there's an article, and again, I'm supplying the links. It's called, Catholic Church in Israel Blames Jewish State for the Current Palestinian Violence. Blame Israel? Oh my God! Goodness, are you really that blind? Are you really that hard-hearted? Are you really that stupid? How can you say this? And this is in the church, the Catholic Church. You know, they don't know. They're, well, if they do, they're denying history. They're denying fact. They're denying all this just, just to, again, push their... Uh, it's just an opinion. It's just a, a thought. It, it's, a, it's a preference. It's not based on fact. You want to do your homework. You want to you want to trace this out. I have an excellent book for you here, right here. Read this, okay? Judgment Day, Islam, Israel, and a Nation. This traces it back. It shows you where anti-Semitism got its roots. Where? Oh my goodness! I just cannot overstate this enough. That at the heart of anti-Semitism. It's evil, okay? It's evil. It's plain and simple. It comes from the pit of hell. And who's involved in this but the Vatican? Hello? The UN. I mean, it does the homework for you. It documents it. It's proof. It's history. It actually happened. It, it's, it's current events. It's going on today. But when you open your eyes and you walk with your eyes wide open, how... I, mm, plainly. Plainly, we see a, a, a conspiracy, I'm going to use that word, okay, between Islam, well, let's just say the Muslims, the UN, the world body, and the Vatican. Now, I can go on and on and on here. But at the bottom, of, at the end of the day, okay, anti-Semitism. You cannot be Christian and hate on the Jews, all right? It's just, it's counterintuitive. It just will not, it's like oil and vinegar, or oil and water, however, it just doesn't mix, okay? It's, on February 16, 2016, on breakingisraelnews.com, here, here, here we go, listen, there's an article called, UK, latest nation to boycott the BDS, which, the, the BDS is the Boycott, Divestment, and Sanction Movement, which has its roots. It started in Egypt, but it's it's prevalent in the American church today. 
There's so many people who call themselves Christian and they're boycotting, they're divesting, they're they're taking all the money out of investments in Israel, and they're sanctioning. They hate Israel. You cannot be a Christian and hate on Israel. Okay? Have you ever read the Bible? You, it, just don't fool yourself. Okay? You can do one or the other. That is your prerogative. That's your right. It's it's. It, Hey, do what you want, okay? I'm not going to judge you. But you can't have your cake and eat it too in this respect. You cannot hate on Israel and be a Christian, okay? It just doesn't work. But to me, in this Breaking Israel News uh, article, what really stood out to me is here we see prophecy again coming to fruition. We can see the prophetic picture coming into focus, okay? We look at, it said the UK, that's over in... Uh, the, the revived empire of, of Rome. This is European Union. This is prophecy. I'm telling you. We know where that the Antichrist is going to come out of. Okay? And here we see... It's a great article. It, it's, it's, uh, it's only six paragraphs long. It's really short. You might be able to read that. You don't have to have the extension span of, uh, you know, whatever. It's short. It's sweet. It's to the point. And what it basically says is Europe... Um, stands by Israel. Well, also, I, w I just want to share one more article with you, and then we'll just we'll get ready to say goodnight. Um, on February 2017, to excuse me, on February 17, 2016, I'm a little crazy here. Remember, I had drug overdoses. I should be dead. On YahooNews.com, there's an article. It's entitled "Covertly." Israel prepares to fight boycott activists online. Now, this is an article you want to read. It's kind of long, but it, it's 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 intriguing. I was intrigued. I thought it was fascinating. So, for me, I went on online and I started researching to the best of my abilities because I'm not that computer savvy. I, I tried to uh, investigate the BDS, where it all started, and who was involved. The BDS, boycott, divestment, and sanctions, big over here in America. Can you? Be in this BDS and be a Christian? Again, the answer is implied. Anyways, so I tried to investigate all this. And at the bottom, at the end of the day, I could not get to the bottom of it or to the top. But it's easy to believe that, you know, it goes straight to the top. It goes to the Club of Rome. It goes to uh, the CFR. It goes to the Illuminati. That's who's behind all this, okay? I can't prove it, but I strongly suspect that Kissinger is involved in all this. You know who Henry Kissinger is, right? A Jew? Against Israel? Uh, don't even get me going. This, this is all prophecy. This is in the news. And I'm trying to keep it short and sweet today, okay? I want to keep it to uh, around 30 minutes. Because I already lost more than half of you. And that's sad. Because what we're talking about is prophecy. What we're talking about should be like... A, uh, like a whetstone. Say we're a knife and, and, and prophecy is a whetstone. We can either... Well, that's a bad metaphor. Anyways, we, we're, we're looking at prophecy for a reason, okay? It's happening. It's current events. But it's been prophesied thousands of years ago. This is proof that the Bible can be trusted. This is proof that God is real. Science is already showing that there's ten um, other dimensions in the Bible back in... In Genesis, showed it showed in Genesis that there's other dimensions that of which four are knowable and six are unknowable. We we see that from uh, Nachmanides. If you if you want, I have uh, an article on my phone. If you text me or email me, I can send it to you about this uh, extra dimensional stuff in Scripture, how it goes, how it's involved. It's all the way back in the in the book of Genesis. It's interesting. It's exciting to, 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 to learn. Knowledge is power, they say. And in this instance, prophecy, knowledge, prophecy, is not only power, but it's salvation, because it's going to get really, 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 really bad, and you do not want to be here for that. And the Christians, we have that blessed hope that we won't be. But I'm here to tell you, America, the church in America... You're in for a lot of pain. I'm in for a lot of pain. I'm going to see some of it. I know it. It's, it's just the truth. 
I, I, I don't know. But let's just switch gears and then we'll be done. I only got ten more minutes, okay? Earthquakes. Jesus, again, as far as prophecy goes, Jesus gave a list of things to look for, right? You know, earthquakes, famines, disease, pestilence, and all that stuff that I don't want to look at today because it's front page news. It's happening. It's painful to watch. And I don't want to scare you. I want to maybe intrigue you. I want to pique your interest. I want to be able to, you know, want you to want to look into this for yourself. And as far as earthquakes go, there's, I will give you a link. It's earthquakereport.com. What you might want to do for your own homework, <laughs> I give homework at church all the time. For your own homework, go on this site, earthquakereport.com, and find out, do a study, do a search, and see how many earthquakes we've had so far in 2016. Okay? Do that. And you'll see where they are, how big they are, and what it all means. Now I'm going to give you the link as well to the bitbag.com. And over in California, right now, on February 19th, uh, 2016, right now, in California, fear is ramping up. Fear is building about the big one. People have been saying it for eons, you know, for centuries, for generations. Oh, the big one, the big one, the big one. Science now is saying the big one, the big one. Look out, here it comes. We talk about that because this is prophecy. I showed you before in one of the other reports where it's mentioned in the book of Revelations there's going to be three earthquakes that are going to be so large, so devastating that it affects the entire globe. Okay? Well, they're getting, they're afraid over there in California right now. They're waiting. Here it comes. Because they just had a, a, a string of little ones that's putting pressure on this big fault line. It's interesting. Look into this stuff. Okay? Earthquakes. It's scary business, but it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, but I say all that just to say this. I, you know, I'm not even going to apologize because I'm just, I'm just giving you my heart here. I'm giving you the truth. I'm, I'm going to the Bible and I'm giving you news. I'm giving you resources that you can, that you can read for yourself because you have to. I don't have to give an account for you on the day of, of, you know, judgment, whatever day that is. Today, tomorrow, ten thousand years from now, you're going to have to, you're going to have to give account for your life for the things that you've done, the things that you said, what you believe, you are one day going to give account for that. But guess what? Every knee, every single knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is the Lord. You should do that now rather than then. Uh, I don't want to preach. This is just prophecy update. But again, as far as prophecy goes, Luke 18 verse 8 says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. What? What's that about? Well, we were just talking about the BDS, right? Everyone is coming against Israel. God's elect. He's going to avenge Israel speedily. <laughs> okay? What side are you on? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Again, the answer is implied, and it's a resounding no. You look at the Christian church in, in America today, no, there is no faith. I mean, I, I hate to say it. I hate to say it. I don't want to say it, but I have to because it's the truth. And, and you should know. You should be aware. You should take all this information and do something with it, okay? Save yourself. Save your family. Because in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, we read, now, pay attention, okay, listen to me. This is Jesus speaking. He says, Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few to find it. What that tells me is you can't be a, a phony Christian, okay? You can either, yeah, sure, you can put on your liturgical robes, you can put on your Sunday go to meet and vest, you can go sit in a church one hour a week and still end up in hell. There's going to be a lot of good people in hell. I mean, oh, you know what? We, hell was not made for mankind. The Bible teaches that hell was created for Satan and his demons, his, his angels, Satan and his angels, it says, which, you know, fallen angels are demons, okay? Hell was created for them. And Satan comes to only to but to, to steal, 
to kill and destroy. If you end up in hell, guess what? You are pretty much led by the hand, willingly, all the way. Jesus, God, never sends anyone to hell. He, Jesus doesn't want you to go. He gave you the way out. Okay, that, That's what Christianity is all about. It, it's good news. It's great news. It's fantastic news. And it's really not hard to be a Christian. Well, I mean, we saw this a couple times ago together. Um, what does the Lord require you, O oh man, but to do to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? It's not hard. It's not hard at all, but it's counterculture. It goes against American way of life. It goes against any way of life in the world today because we know from the book of Ephesians, we know from all the Bible that, you know what? <laughs> we talked about this before, about the power structure behind the power structure, behind the power structure. And you look at Jesus' uh, wilderness, temptation in the wilderness, right? Satan brought him up on top of a high mountain and says, all this I will give to you. Pretty much the world right now belongs to Satan. So we're in it, not of it, okay? Um, and this is quickly becoming a sermon. I don't, I don't want it to be. But I just want to say, look, number one, I realize I'm, I'm, I raise some eyebrows, and I, I don't apologize for that. Um, and if I offend anybody, you know, well, quite, quite frankly, maybe you need to be offended, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm offended every day by the culture in which I live. And they're blaming me and the Christianity. I mean, you know, we're dangerous and we're, we're, we're Hillary says we're good, enough, good for nothing but to be locked up and throw away the key. The Pope says I'm dangerous and I should be killed. Okay, you know my address. Here I am. I am not running. I'm not hiding. I'm not going to cower behind a tree. I'm not going to, I'm not going to change. Okay. But at the same time, I'm not going to cause anybody grief. All right, I'm not going to put a vest on and go blow myself up. And you know, that's not Christianity. Okay, to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. That's what I'm going to do. And if you're offended by that, good, because that means we both made our choices in life. Okay, and I'm not your judge. Having said all that, I'm going to cut this short. I, I do want to tell you that there is a lot going on in the world today, and none of it good. None of it good. But we'll get back to that next time together. We'll, we'll get back into uh, looking at all this painful stuff that's going on in the world, because we have to watch. Jesus told us, this is, Watch, therefore, and pray always that you be counted worthy to escape all these things that are soon to come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. That's talking plainly and clearly about a salvation, hope. And already I said too much. God bless you. Um, have a great day. This is your Prophecy Update for February 19th, 2016. Have a great day.